Good evening, good evening, everybody. It is that time. We are back again, um, getting into the Word of God, and uh, we are ready to dive in. I'm excited tonight about uh, the series that we are in. I'm excited about uh, the topic that we have been talking about, and uh, I just want you to jump on and uh, grab your Bible, grab a notebook, you know, and, and let's get ready to get back into this word tonight. Um, as I was saying, uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is the, is what we're on, it's the discussion that we're on, and it's really been blessing uh, myself as well as a lot of people uh, have been blessed by uh, what God has been saying and what God has been doing. So we are ready to dive in. Um, I'm going to hop on and I'm going to share this video. Y'all come on in. You can uh, jump in and say hello or whatever you like to, you know, greeting you like to do. But we're grateful for everybody. Um, just thankful that, you know, everybody's been so interactive. Your questions, your comments. We need all of that energy tonight. So thank you. But I'm ready to go. Uh, the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let me share this video as well. And then we're going to pray and then we're going to get started tonight. All right. Right. Kelly, I see you on. God bless you. Good to see you, daughter. Pastor Shannon McCray shouting us out tonight. God bless you. Pastor, uh, we love you. You know how we feel about you. We, we love Pastor Shannon McCray. She is somebody special, uh, part of a SOP Nation family. And uh, she is one of my favorite preachers. I, don't, I am not even ashamed to tell you that and to say that she is one of my favorite preachers. And we bless God for her on tonight. So we're getting ready to get started. Again, I'm, uh, I'm sharing this real quick. And then we're going to dive in. Right, all right. There we go. All right, I have shared it. I'm ready to go. Let's pray, y'all, tonight. Father, we bless your holy and righteous name. We thank you for your grace that has been with us all day long. Thank you for allowing us to be in this place. Thank you for allowing us to be here at this moment to study your word. Uh, we just invite you in tonight. We invite the Holy Spirit in tonight. We want you to have your way. We want you to, Lord God, send revelation. Father, change our mindset. Lord God, renew us. Oh God, empower us. Oh Lord God, and when we leave this particular study, let us be better than we've ever been in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all, let's go. Let's go. So tonight, um, we're going to finish up on not the entirety of the series, but a portion of where we left off. And so we've been we've been diving into the nature of the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is. All right. If you have not caught the, the entirety of this series, I want you to uh, go back and watch parts one through three. I mean, understanding the Holy Spirit is so essential to the work, to the to the uh, walk of the believer. And so uh, just to recap for those of us who were just coming in, you know, I, I say this, I've been saying this every single week. We understand the father's place very well. We understood the father's place well. He is the one who sits high. He's on the throne. He, we understand him as the sovereign one. He is uh, the one who controls, the one who spoke things into existence. All right. We understand the father's place. We understand Jesus' place, Jesus's place. Uh, he is the Lamb of God, the Word that was made flesh. He came and dwelt among us for 33 and a half years. He, he, he worked ministry. He was called to a ministry in three and a half years, and he changed the entirety of the world. History revolves around him. Um, everything, everything revolves around the man, Jesus Christ, all right? Uh, and so we understand that he died. Uh, he went to the cross. He died. He rose again. Uh, we understand Jesus is the Savior. His blood was shed for the remission of our sins. We we appreciate, we, we have an uh, easy time to understand and visualizing 
uh, giving glory to God the Father. We have an uneasy understanding of, of praising Jesus, but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, uh, his place and, and what his ministry is, what his assignment is. Because one of the things that even God does well, even within the Godhead, is that uh, the Father knows his place and he knows his job. The Son knows his place and he knows his job. The Holy Spirit knows his place and he knows his job. And they don't cross each other. They don't try to get in each other's way. I love the order that is in the Godhead. See, we're the ones that struggle with order. and We're the ones that struggle getting in each other's lanes. But God, uh, he... he he is so, he's a God of order. And so the Holy Spirit has a ministry, all right? And the ministry, the word minister means to serve. He comes to serve. He comes to aid. He comes to help. He comes to do a job in the life of the believer. So catch parts one through three. You will learn about the Holy Spirit's job in being, uh, the first thing that Jesus said is he will convict the world of sin. The first job of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin and to draw men unto Christ. Jesus said it like this, no man can come to the Father lest he come through me, lest he be drawn by me. It is the Holy Spirit's job to draw you and to convict you of your sin. What is conviction? Conviction is an awareness. It is an awareness of your sin. So before you're saved, the Holy Spirit begins to deal with you. He begins to convict you. You know, you know, when you were uh, just in the world doing your thing, living in sin, and, and there was something on the inside of you that kept on gnawing at you saying, I got to get right. I got to change my life. I want to make a change. I need God. That was the Holy Spirit, folks. And he was there with he was there with you even when, you know, you were doing what you were doing. Some of us were on drugs. Some of us were was in the club. Some of us was laid up in various bedrooms and all kinds of things. Some of us had hatred in our heart. Some of us had lies on our lips, but thank God that the Holy Spirit one day convicted you of your sin and led you to a place where you came to Jesus Christ. You came to the cross. Now, at the moment that you come to the cross and you and you repent of your sins and you receive the finished work of Jesus Christ, that is when the Holy Spirit then comes in and he makes your spirit alive. It is the process of being called born again. It's being born again. Hey, Mika, how you doing? Hey, Dwayne, how you doing? God bless you. The Holy Spirit makes you over again. You are born again. Come on. I get excited when I talk about the Holy Spirit. That's right. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I get excited when I talk about the Holy Spirit, but you are born again. He takes your dead spirit and makes you alive in God. So watch this. Watch this. The Holy Spirit then tethers you to to he tethers your re, re tethers your connection to everything that heaven has for you, everything that has heaven has for you. You are then baptized into the body of Christ. All right. You're baptized in the body of Christ. You, be, you transition from death to life. You transition from darkness to light. You transition. Oh my God, from being an enemy of God to being a son and daughter of God. That's good news right there. The Holy Spirit is the one that does this. And when you become alive, he's not done bringing conviction to your life. No, he's not. He's not done bringing conviction to your life. The conviction that took that took place prior to the cross now becomes the conviction that he brings in the believer's life. And so that you will not derail your destiny so that you will not uh, fall short of the grace of God so that you will not fall uh, uh, victim to the enemy's traps. And he gives you Romans chapter, Romans chapter eight. He gives you the power. Remember we talked about that Romans chapter eight. He gives you the power to live a life of freedom from sin. All right. So, so we talked about this, that the believer does not sin because uh, they are under domination of sin. The believer sins because they choose to sin. Come on, somebody. I know, I know it's tight, but it is right. The believer no longer sins because they are dominated by sin. Read your word, Romans 8. The believer sins now because they choose to sin. And the Bible says that we are freed from the law, from the laws of sin and death. We are freed from the power of sin and death. We are freed from its grip. And now the life-giving spirit, the same spirit that rose Jesus up from the dead now lives in us. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
All right. So we went all through that. Then we talked about this. Is the last part of the recap, the recap is we talked about the Holy Spirit is then there to enable you or to aid you in your prayers. The scripture says that we know we know not what we ought to pray, but the spirit himself maketh intercession through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit then becomes the aid to your prayer life. And, and those of us uh, who have got the infilling of the Holy Ghost, uh, you have, so a lot of us have experienced when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, he gives you a new prayer language. And we talked about that and how the Holy Spirit comes in to pray perfect prayers through you. He comes in to give you a spirit-led prayer because he is connected to the mind and the heart of God. He knows what you need before you need it. He knows what you're going to face before you go through it. The Holy Spirit then begins to download heaven's agenda in you. The Holy Spirit begins to download the mind of Christ in you. The Holy Spirit then is responsible for producing fruit and gifts in us. All right, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to get ahead of myself because that's for that's for another lesson. All right, so we're going forward. Uh, we're going forward tonight, uh, and I want to teach you about. Uh, I, I want to teach you about another so so important uh, revelation about the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit. Uh, his nature, the way that he operates and the way that he works. When you understand this in the scriptures tonight, it is going to sh it is going to help us understand why people who have been born again, people who who identify with Christ, people who go to church Sunday after Sunday, is going to explain a whole lot. It's going to explain a whole lot that we would understand why is it. That we who have who have the spirit, who have been born again, why is it that we don't really see uh, a victory all the time? Why is it that we don't really see a uh, transformation? Why is it that we don't really see the power of God? Why is it that we don't see uh, uh, a victory over our habits and victory over our flesh? All right. You got to understand the nature of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to I'm going to show you something that is so vital tonight. So let's go get into it. Uh, there are a few scriptures that I want to go over. All right. So here's the main premise of it. Here's the main premise of it. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God must be, he must be invited in and yielded to. The Holy Spirit of God must be invited in and yielded to. Two, in everything that you do and everything concerning the Holy Spirit, he must be invited. Come on. He must be invited in and yielded to this. It sounds simple, but I promise you it is a revelation that is going to help you. The Holy Spirit does not come in to dominate. All right. Let me give you an example. All right. Let me give you an example. All right. The nature of the demonic, the nature of the demonic, the nature of the demonic is opposite the nature of the Holy Spirit. The nature of the demonic is to is to oppress. OK, the nature of the demonic is to oppress and to in, inflict control against the will of the person against the will of the host. The nature of the demonic is to oppress and to inflict the will against the nature of the host. OK, so so the nature of the demonic is that when when somebody is demonically oppressed, they come in and they try to uh, uh, alter your mind, alter your thinking. And they do it by force. They do it by control. They 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 manipulate. They control a person who is really who is fully possessed with a demon. Whenever, whenever the, 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 the demonic even manifests, they, they black out. They are no longer in control. The nature of the demonic is to control by force and to oppress. And everything about the demonic is opposite of the nature of God. All right. And so the nature of the Holy Spirit, all right, is to uplift, to liberate, and also 
to be yielded to, all right? He does not, the Holy Spirit does not have the desire to override where you won't invite him. By nature, he does not have the, the, the desire to override where he is not called upon, all right? And I'm going to show you. He, uh, I like that. I like that, Minister Chavis. He is the perfect gentleman. I'm going to show you in Scripture. As powerful as God is, as powerful of God is, all of heaven's power is available to you. All of heaven's resources are available to you. All, everything that God is is available to you. But let me tell you something. It is like... It is like the electricity that is in your house, right? If you've got working electricity, all right, you've got access to power outlets all throughout that house, okay? But nothing, electricity ain't just going to go, is not just going to flow until something plugs into it, until something plugs into the socket and then puts a demand on it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Until something plugs into it and then puts a demand on it. Yeah. Your microwave can't do nothing until that thing is plugged in and puts a demand on it. Your coffee machine, your oven, your refrigerator, all of your appliances, everything that that works in power, the, the lamp, the lamp that's in your house, you know, anything. It has to put a demand on the electric current that is available. My God. And so tonight, I just want to let you know that you're wired to win. Come on. You're wired to win. You're wired for victory. You're wired for peace. You're wired for success. You're wired, hallelujah, for power. You're wired for all. Heaven's got you wired up. It's just a matter of if you're going to plug in, if you're going to plug in tonight. And I want to get plugged in to the Holy Spirit. So everything about the Holy Spirit, he must be invited in and yielded to. Now let's go to the word and I want to show you. Let's go to the word and I want to show you tonight. Hallelujah. So the first scripture that we're going to look at, the first scripture we're going to look at is Isaiah 63, Isaiah 63 and 10. Isaiah 63 and 10. That's where we're going. Isaiah 63 and 10 is where we're going tonight. All right. And I'm going to read that for you. Uh, and it says the, it says these words and it says, but they rebelled. They rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them. My God, that's powerful right there. They rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them. All right. So what that scripture was talking about was talking about in the Old Testament where Israel where Israel was being led out of bondage. They were being led out of bondage. God had delivered them and brought them out of Egypt and they were being led by Moses, but ultimately by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was trying to lead them to a place called the promised land where all of the blessings of heaven were waiting for the people of God. And so each and every one of us are going through an exodus experience. Yeah, you're coming out of something and God wants to bring you into something new. But the key word here that I want to focus on is that they rebelled. They rebelled and grieved the spirit. They rebelled and grieved the spirit. All right. They rebelled and grieved the spirit. So focusing on that word about rebelling is that the Holy Spirit will he will gently move on us he will gently lead us and guide us but there is a part of his nature that if you rebel against the holy spirit all right if you rebel and turn against the holy spirit then you're actually you're actually uh, um cutting off the ability of what he wants to do in your life my God, you're cutting off the ability of what he wants to do in your life when you pull away. All right. So the Holy Spirit is available to each and every one of us. But we have got to learn not to rebel against the spirit of God. We've got to learn to cooperate with the spirit of God. Now, 
So many times in your walk with God, so many times in your life, you know, people will ask, you know, well, how do I, how do I really, how do I really uh, stay in tune with the Holy Spirit? And, and the key to staying in tune with the Holy Spirit is you've got to cooperate with the Holy Spirit operating in your life. All right. And, and people ask all the time, well, what does what does the voice of God sound like? What does the voice of God sound like? Because I want to become familiar. I want to become familiar with the voice of God. I want to become familiar when God speaks to me. It's, it's, uh, let, me let me just make it plain. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it, it is nothing deep. You're not going to hear an audible voice. You're not going to, uh, you're not going to hear, you know, the, the sky is not going to open. The Holy Spirit speaks to you through the impressions that he makes upon the yielded spirit. Let me help somebody out tonight. The Holy Spirit speaks to you through the impressions that he makes through the yielded spirit. Okay. So the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is like that, that still small voice that you hear. The voice of God sounds like the voice of your conscience. I'm trying to tell you. All right, let's not make it deep. The voice of God sounds like the voice of your conscience. When, before, before you are redeemed, even before you are redeemed, there is an element of your consciousness because God has placed the consciousness in you. All right. And so when you're about to do something wrong or you're about to do something that feels wrong, there is a voice that's on the inside of you that tells you, you know, that's not right. You should not do that. But oftentimes when you're when you're not redeemed, the flesh, the power of the flesh overrides the conscience. All right. So now the the, the redeemed man, the redeemed man now has the ability for the Holy Spirit to operate through the conduit of your consciousness. And it's an enlightened consciousness that now has the enlightenment of the revelation of God's word. So the Holy Spirit speaks through you through your God consciousness. Oh, my God. This is helping somebody tonight. Uh, Minister Chavis says uh, it's like it's like when the umbilical cord is cut from the mother and the baby. Now the baby has to fend for themselves. Oh, listen, I don't want to have to fend for myself. God. Hallelujah. Pastor, Pastor Shannon says tonight that cooperation is key. Listen, it is. It most definitely is. Um, and so the Holy Spirit, he begins to speak to you through your conscience. Now, let me teach you something about this again. So when the Holy Spirit begins to operate through your conscience, you can cooperate with the spirit or you can rebel against the spirit. All right. So let me just use for an example. All right. You get revelation of the word of God. And the word of God begins to deal with you on a certain subject matter. And God is beginning to bring about that conviction. You know, you hear the word conviction begins to come and, and then conviction begins to come. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But then you get in the heat of the moment. You get in the heat of the moment. You get in the heat of the battle. And now comes the test. Now comes the test. Right. It, when you are when you are born again and walking with God, there will there will be a voice of God that speaks. There will be a voice of God that begins to give you direction, instruction and begins to speak through your consciousness. All right. But when we have fed the flesh, when we have fed the flesh all week long, when we have fed the flesh, the voice of God becomes dim in your life. Oh my God, this is good. This is going to help somebody. When you have fed the flesh, the voice of God becomes dim. The flesh speaks very loud and the voice of God becomes dim. So let's say something happens and you get angry, right? You begin to get angry. And let's say that anger was your issue, right? When you are, when you are tapped into God, when you are tapped into God, you're in the things of the spirit, the spirit of God will begin to rise up in you and begin to tell you how to handle that anger. Yes, he will. Come on. Do I got any witnesses out there? Do I got any witnesses out there? The Holy Spirit will begin to tell you. He'll begin to speak. It'll be, the Holy Spirit will activate and he'll begin to show you how to handle that anger. The, you all of a sudden you feel anger begin to rise up on you. You feel that little lightning bolt begin to shoot through you. And the Holy Spirit will then begin to bring up the, out of the well of your soul. He will begin to bring up that word. He says, listen, hold your peace. 
Hold your peace for vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. And then you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Where did that come from? My God. And then, and then all of a sudden you have the choice now to yield to the spirit or to rebel and override what the spirit wants to do in your life. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I see Mr. Chavis says, I am a witness. He will put that Peter in, into subjection. You know, Peter had that quick tongue. He had them quick hands. He was the first one to pull out the sword. He had that tongue that was sharp, you know, but the Holy Spirit will, will do it. But you've got to learn not to rebel against the spirit. All right. Um, let, let's move on because I got to give you so many more examples. So many more examples. Come on. Y'all talk to me. Y'all talk to me tonight. Uh, my sister Joey says, uh, when you accept the Holy Spirit and welcome him into your heart, you don't have to worry about how you will hear the voice of God. You will know and, and you will know and you will know it is the voice of God. That's so true. The Bible says, Jesus said these words. He says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. My sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Let me let me give you another example, right? Another example. So many times God will lead us to do a thing and it's not always an issue of sin. It's not always an issue of doing wrong, but sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak to you and he will tell you, listen, I want you to bless that person. I want you to bless that person. I want you to bless them financially. I want you to just, what you got? You have $100 in your pocket. I want you to be obedient to me. And I want you to give them $100 out of, that you have out of your pocket. And you're like, uh-uh, oh, that can't be God. No, because I need this money. <laughs> that can't be God. No, that's just my imagination. But we And we do that all the time. God will say, I want you to witness to that person. That person standing over there. I want you to witness to them. And I want you to, I want you to tell them. Hallelujah. I want you to tell them about the goodness of the Lord. And we're like, we're walking in the grocery store like, nope, Holy Ghost, that ain't you. Oh, that ain't you. No, there's no way because I can't do that. They don't know me. I don't know them. They're going to think I'm strange. Um, They're going to think I'm crazy. And so we just override sometimes the unction of the Holy Spirit. But God is trying to teach us how to receive the leading of the Holy Spirit. All right. Uh, this is so vital. Uh, even in our prayers, even in our prayer life, listen to me good. Sometimes we pray and we're just going for it. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying, and we're going for it and we're just talking, right? Never take the time to sit back and then hear God and then say, Lord, now you speak to me. Give me direction for my day. Lord, speak to me, reveal to me the things of my heart. Lord, I want to hear from you because now you got to take the time to pause in your prayer. And like any, any, any time we have conversation, you got to understand that any, any good conversation is not going to just be a one way street. It's going to be a dialogue. God wants to visit us in our prayer life and he wants to speak. He wants to lead us. So he must be yielded to and invited in. So the first thing we understand, the first scripture that we read we understand that it is possible to rebel against them. To rebel is to pull against them. Come on, our executive pastor joining us tonight. God bless you. My wife is somebody special, y'all. You can rebel against the spirit. I don't want to be in the, in the sin of rebellion. You know, the Bible tells us, this is going to be deep tonight. The Bible tells us that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. It's, just, it's like witchcraft when, you, when you're rebelling, when you rebel against what God wants to do. Come on, stop fighting against God. Stop fighting against what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. This walk with God is one that with the Holy Spirit is one that you must yield to. Audrey, God bless you. Good to see you. Rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. And we got too many rebellious uh, rebel people that are just dominated by the sin of rebellion. But tonight we don't want to rebel because God is trying to bring you into promise. Look at look at the example with Israel. He was trying to bring them, bring them into a land that was flowing with milk and honey, but they continuously rebelled. And that means to pull against Rebellion means to pull against, to pull the opposite way, all right? 
And so God literally had to turn them over at that time. He had to turn them over and he had to turn them around to go backwards. And listen, I don't have time for going backwards in my walk. I don't have time for going backwards in my life. I'm, I've got to yield to the Holy Spirit. All right, let's look at the next one because I want to show you. I want to show you. Come on, uh, something else. Daily. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Y'all talking to me. Daily yield your will to his will and allow him to do his good pleasure within us. Wow, that's powerful. Come on, talk to me tonight. You got a daily yield, all right? So let me let's look at another let's look at another aspect of the Holy Spirit's nature. All right, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 19 1 Thessalonians 19 1 Thessalonians 19 through 22. 1 Thessalonians 19 and 22, all right? Somebody put that in the comments and we're going to read that we're going to read there. 1 Thessalonians 19 and 22. All right, this is what the word of the Lord says. This is what the word of the Lord says unto us. It says and it says and do not quench the spirit do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. All right. Abstain from every form of evil. Come on. I see the comments. This is good. Some, my, my wife says sometimes people feel like not doing what God desires for us, uh, desires for us to do is easier but you're actually digging yourself in a hole that will be much harder to get out of. Lord knows that's true because it seems like, you know, the flesh get, tells us lies that it is going to be the easy way out, that it's going to be the best thing for us. But I promise you, wherever the Holy Spirit leads you, he's going to take you to, a, to somewhere good. Whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do, it's going to produce Whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do, it's going to produce. It's going to produce favor. It's going to produce blessing. It's going to produce uh, uh, access to, to more of God. It is going to produce. You cannot go wrong being obedient to the Spirit of God. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you what I know. All right. So this scripture here in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19 this says, do not quench the spirit. And that's such an interesting word. It says, do not despise prophecies. All of this goes together. Test all things, hold fast to that which is good and abstain from evil. Okay. Okay. Let's break this down. Let's break this down. Let's break this down tonight. Oh, wow. Come on. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all tonight. We're going to break this down. We're going to break this down. I love it. Uh, Minister Chavis. Yes, it does. The flesh manipulates us, uh, manipulates us into the will of destruction and death. Come on. Audrey says uh, not only will it not only will it produce, but it will protect you. Yes. The ways of God will protect you from unnecessary pain, from unnecessary setbacks, from unnecessary hurt, from unnecessary mistakes, from unnecessary wasted time. Come on. Y'all are helping me tonight. But listen to this. Watch this. Let's break this down. So so Paul says, do not quench the spirit. All right. Do not quench the spirit. What does it mean to quench something? To quench something means to uh, to suppress, to stifle or to extinguish. To suppress, to stifle or to extinguish. Oh, yes. The Holy Spirit, the, when, when, when Jesus described the Holy Spirit to come, he said, and he said that I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and fire. The Holy Spirit is like a fire. He's like a refiner's fire. He's like a, he's like that fire that Jeremiah talked about that was shut up in, in his veins. The Holy Spirit is like a fire and fire is powerful. Fire is consuming. Fire, fire, uh, it, it spreads. Come on, somebody. Fire is a cleansing agent. Fire purifies gold and it purifies silver. Fire is something that is powerful and it's all consuming and it burns. 
But the only thing that has the power to put out fire is if you stifle it, if you cover it, if you if you suck out the oxygen. Fire needs oxygen in order to, to thrive and, and, and breathe. It needs something to work with. Fire needs something to burn. Come on, somebody. If it doesn't have wood, if it doesn't have uh, uh, something to, to burn, if it doesn't have something to, to, to burn, it will go out. It will die. And I don't want the fire of the Holy Ghost to go out in my life. And so we read another revelation that the Holy Spirit says the Holy Spirit's fire can be quenched. Woo, this is good tonight. Why is it that you're no longer on fire for God? Why is it that you keep on going through these ups and downs? Where is your zeal? Where is your passion? Something has come in that has tried to quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it what it is today, but sometimes he wants to use bitterness to quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he wants to use your hurt and your pain to quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he wants to use a letdown. Come on. I know the devil tries to use that some kind of letdown, some kind of disappointment. He tries to use it, but it's only to quench the fire but Paul said fan up the flame of God stir up the gift and fan up the flame of God because our God is like a consuming fire and you got to let that fire burn you got to give the Holy Spirit something to work with you got to give the Holy Spirit something to produce in you because I can't afford for my fire to go out. Yeah, I've got people talking uh, talking bad about me, but I can't afford for my fire to go out. I got people that are plotting against me, but I can't afford for my fire. I got temptation that is knocking on my door, but you know what? I, I used to yield to that, but I cannot afford to yield to that temptation because I can't afford for my fire to go out. Come on. And, and so he says, you, you, you got to understand when you want the fire of God to move, watch this, watch this. He says, when you want the fire of God to move, one of the things one of the things that you, you can't lose sight of is you can't despise prophecies. He says, do not despise prophecy. Do not quench the spirit. And how many, uh, how many of our churches nowadays are, are, are losing the fire of God? Yeah, we're losing the fire of God. And, and we're losing the fire of God. I tell you, any service where the fire of God is evident is always where the power of God shows up. When you invite the fire in, oh God, when you invite the fire in, that's when transformation takes place. When you invite the fire in, that's when deliverance takes place. When you invite the fire in, that's when service uh, uh, is no longer on the order of a program or a script. When you invite the fire in, the Holy Spirit moves when he wants to move and prophecy begins to spring forth. Oh my God, the word of God begins to come unto us again. And, 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 and the flowing of the Holy Spirit produces more fire. I come in, I come in, uh, into the house of God and I might be weighted down, but your fire does something to my fire. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. It's combustible. I like it. Come on, Nikki. It's combustible. Yes, it is. And your fire begins to ignite my fire and your praise begins to ignite my praise and your worship begins to ignite my worship. And so when we yield to the spirit, even in our church services, it brings life. I can't go I cannot go to where there is no fire of God. I can't go to a place where there is no fire. I can't worship where there is no fire. I can't, I can't, I, I, I gotta be someplace where the fire of God is burning, where there is evidence of a move of the Holy Spirit. And too many times, I'm afraid because this generation, we like to, we like to, uh, 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 I, I'm afraid that we've been guilty of quenching the Spirit. We try to box him in. We try to fit him in and we only want, you know, we want to be comfortable now and we don't want it, We don't want uh, anything that, 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 that deals with us at the core. We want to box God into an hour. We want to box God into one hour. Uh, God, hold, you only got one hour to move God. And I get it. I get it. You know, just some churches, they're large churches. They have to have two and three services. And so they must be time conscious. I get it. I get it. But, but, but. 
sometimes uh, we, we begin to box God in and, and we begin to put him in the framework of our programs and the framework of our ideologies and the framework of this modern day, this modern day uh, religion. And then we begin to quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. And so what God wants to do, he no longer can do. But church, don't lose your fire. Come on. Come on. Come on. Church, don't lose your fire. My, my wife said this is why fasting is essential, because you've got to crucify your flesh. God is raising up a church that is hungry for the fire again. When the fire comes back, you will have a hunger for the move of God. Yeah. Come on. The people that are despising prophecy, they don't want to hear what God has to say. They don't want to receive that prophetic mantle, that prophetic word. He says, when the fire comes back, you will, you will not despise prophecy. When the fire comes back, you will test all things. What is test all things? When the fire comes back, you will, your discernment will sharpen. Come on, come on. You will begin to hear God again. You will begin to hear the prophetic again. When the fire comes back, you will be tapped into the prophetic. The prophetic is the declaration and the voice of God for what he is saying for right now, for what he is saying for this season. I don't need a, I don't need your message. I don't need your canned sermon. I don't need you copying a message that you heard off the internet. My God, I done seen people do it. I don't need something that, that is not fresh. I need something that comes with fresh fire on it. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Don't lose your fire. Come on, church. Don't lose your fire. If you're in a dead church, my God, mm, you might want to reevaluate. If you're in a place where the fire is not there, come on. You, you, you know, you need the fire. The fire is essential. The fire is essential in this season. This is why we are we are walking in a, in a defeated place. This is why sin looks more appealing than 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 the things of God is because we are losing the fire. Anytime sin looks more appealing than the beauty of his holiness, you have lost the fire. Oh my God, help me tonight. Anytime uh being casual in your Christian walk is it, it, you're stuck in this place of just being dry, just being cold, just being casual with your with your with your walk with God. You're losing the fire. Come on. Anytime you don't have a burning desire to see souls saved, we're losing the fire. This is why God is reviving the fire of the church. Oh, my God. You get those. That's it. That's it, Minister Chavis. You get his voice with precise and clear instructions. Yes, yeah, sometimes he will tell you, I want you to do this with your children. He will tell you, I want you to do this. So, you know, in order to in order to uh, change some things in your atmosphere of your home, he will give you instructions. I need you to go on a fast for three days. Oh, my God. Come on. Let the prophetic unction return to the church. Let the prophetic mantle. I didn't say that he was going to make us all prophets. That's not what I said. You're but I'm talking about the prophetic mantle and the prophetic unction of hearing what the say of the Lord for our lives today. Come on. Oh, my God. Yes, Mika, come on. If I can give my job eight hours plus, I can surely give God three hours. I don't mind giving him time. That is so, that is so real because we'll sit in a movie theater for two and a half hours. We'll get our hair done for four hours. We'll go to work for eight hours. But, but when it comes to church, when it comes to church, they better have me out in an hour and 15 minutes or else, you know, but, but you know what? I get it. I get it. Because when you go to church and there's no fire, that hour seemed like the longest hour and 30 minutes you've ever been in in your life. Because it's like antics, show, flesh. <laughs> Come on. But when you when you're really when you're really sitting under the midst of the fire, you look back, you look out, you look back and like two hours gone by and you're like, Lord, I, I want more. How many times? Come on, spirit of truth. You know, this is real. How many times we have been in the midst of God's presence? We dismiss and still and, and everybody, nobody want to leave. And it seemed like nobody want to leave. I'm telling you, that is how it is when the fire comes in. So we don't want to quench the spirit. He says, test all things. Your discernment will become sharper when the fire is evident. You will be keen on things. You'll pick up on the enemy real quick. 
The enemy blindsides us because we quit. We have not let the fire. We have not. No, we have not let the fire burn in us. And so the enemy blindsides us, and we're ignorant of his devices, and he catches us off guard. But when 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 the fire is burning on the inside of you, the fire of the Holy Ghost, your discernment is sharp. You begin to see the enemy before he even comes. Uh huh. I got my eye on you. Yeah, I got my eye on you. I see you. I see you. I am braced. I am braced for what you're about to try. Come on. Oh, God, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Uh, my wife says, minds must be renewed and the hearts must be healed. These are the stumbling blocks for many people. It blocks them from this experience with God. Thank you for saying that. Our minds and our hearts got to be renewed because it blocks us from experiencing what this word is talking about. That's why the word says, guard your heart. And in all things, guard your heart from out of your heart. The issues of life flow from out of your heart. You got to guard your heart. Come on, somebody. And he says, do not, you won't, you will not despise prophecy. You will test all things, right? You will hold fast to that which is good and you will abstain from every evil. You will desire the good things of God and the desires of your, of evil desires will begin to burn away. When the fire comes, when the fire comes, the evil things that, that you used to do and you used to think about and used to be part of your character, the fire consumes it and you begin to abstain from every form of evil. Come on, come on. My God, this is what the fire will do. This is what the fire will do. But like I told you earlier, the nature of the Holy Spirit, he is a powerful fire. But he says in a word, do not quench the spirit. So, so many times what happens, even in our church services, y'all, even in our church services, sometimes God don't even need the preaching. Come on, come on. Sometimes God wants us to stay right there in the worship. But we quench the spirit because we got an agenda. Sometimes we get into the flesh and we, we override the spirit. The spirit is moving. He's moving in. He's moving in whatever various areas. Sometimes the Holy Spirit comes in. He comes in even in the intercessory prayer. And the Holy Spirit moves in the prayer. And that's where that's where the Holy Spirit is, is moving us. He wants to move the church in repentance. But are we sensitive? When's the last time we fell on the altar and just all repented corporately? When is the last time that the, when, when the Holy Spirit told us that today all he wants is worship? When is the last time that the, to, the Holy Spirit says today all I want is for you to tarry and seek me? When is the last time? So we got to be sensitive to the fire. My God. All right. I got to move on. I got to move on. I got to move on. All right. So the Holy Spirit says the Bible does us know the Holy Spirit says that he can be quenched. He can be quenched, but we don't want to quench the spirit. We want to let the fire burn. All right, next one. Next one. I'm almost through tonight. Almost through tonight. Acts. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Oh, y'all are talking tonight. Y'all are talking tonight. This is good stuff. The heart and the mind is the key part where the enemy attacks. He don't care nothing about your stuff. He wants your spirit and our gifts because he possesses none. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. Audrey, you know, you must have a made up mind to want God more than anything else because he will teach you how to live. Come on, y'all. Y'all are blessing me. Dwayne, what's going on, brother? He says, renew in me a clean heart. That's what, that's what we want tonight. All right, Acts chapter 7 and 51. I want to show you another one. I want to show you another one. This is about the nature of the Holy Spirit. He must be yielded to and invited in. He must be yielded to and invited in. Come on. This is why we want to invite him. When I get on here to do Bible study, Holy Spirit, we invite you in. Have your way. When we come to service, we are on our knees 15 minutes before the service even begins. We're on our face in intercessory prayer. Holy Spirit, have your way. Invite him in. We want you to have your way. When, when, you're in your, when you're in your personal prayer time, you gotta invite him in. Come on. Vicky, what's going on, sis? 
Come on, help me, push me tonight, push me tonight. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Acts 7 and 51, Acts 7 and 51. Here we go, y'all ready? Here we go. He says this, he says, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised, in, you're stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers do, so do you. Oh my God. So there is another element. Again, we talked about, we talked about it. The first one is that uh, Isaiah 63 and 10, don't rebel against the spirit, rebel against the spirit. That means to pull away the opposite pull, the opposite pull. We talked about do not quench the fire of the Holy Ghost. You can don't, don't allow anything to put your fire out. Don't allow anything to put your fire out because you need your fire to live. You need your fire to thrive. You need your fire to hear God. You need your fire to discern. You need your fire to walk in the goodness of God. You need your fire to turn away from the old things. You need your fire. Come on, we need the fire in our church in order to see deliverance, breakthrough, healing. Come on, we need the fire in our prayer life. Don't pray without the fire. Don't preach without the fire. Don't prophesy without the fire. Come on, don't worship without the fire. I don't want to do anything in God without the fire. In this season, I don't want to do anything without the fire. Hallelujah. I feel this thing. I don't want to do anything without the fire. I don't want to read and study your word without the fire. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come in even as I study and let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to just ignite my soul. Come on. Don't quench the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, 7 and 51. He talked to them. He had to rebuke the people. We don't like that kind of word. Let 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 our pastor come in and and, and say the message today is you stiff necked and uncircumcised heart people. <laughs> let, let 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 that be the word for Sunday. You you would see a lot of people be like, wait a minute, walking out the church. But uh, you know there was a boldness that were on those apostles, and he had to put some things in place uh, for the religious spirit that was trying to come in. And he says, but listen, the key word is he says that you always resist the Holy Spirit. You resist the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, there is a difference. This is very similar, but there's a difference. There's a difference between resisting, uh, resisting and rebelling. All right. Resisting and rebelling. Resist is uh is essentially rebelling is like a direct pulling away, but resisting is when God is trying to move. God is trying to move and you resist in a sense that you won't let him do the fullness of what he wants to do. You won't let him do the fullness of what he wants to do. You won't let him do the fullness because there's something in you that is resisting. Something in you that is resisting. If you know anything about electrical current, if you have a wire and it has a if it has a place in the wire in the connection where there is broken resistance, it means that the current cannot flow freely. The current cannot flow freely. And so sometimes we resist God. It's not that we're in direct rebellion, but sometimes we're just resisting the fullness of where he wants to take us. Oh my God, come on, come on. God, I'll give you this much, but this little part, oh, this little part of my heart, this little part of my life, this little part of, of, of where uh, this, I, I can't release. This, you, you, you yield in some areas, but resist them in other areas. So resisting is like, oh God, not there, it's too painful. God, not there, it's too personal. God, not there, uh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Yeah, I, I know God calling you, some of you higher. Come on, oh, this is good, this is good tonight. Uh, Vicky says, you won't let him to the, you won't let him do the fullness of what he wants to do because something is resisting. Y'all help me preach tonight. 
Rebel and resist. The, di the difference, rebel, is a direct pulling away. Come on, but to resisting is when you won't allow him to do the fullness of what he wants to do. And tonight, I want to talk to some of you. I want to talk to some of you. God has been calling you to step out and do something. God has been calling you. You've been hearing God ushering you in, even into your calling, even into a ministry assignment, even into something that he, something that he wants you to do, but you've been resisting. Sometimes the Holy Spirit wants you to go back and apologize to somebody that you offended, but you resist it. You say, God, no, I can't do that. Come on. You've been yielding to other places, but there is still a level of resistance. And in an electrical current, wherever there is resistance, there is not a free flow. There is a loss of power. Some of us are not operating in full power. Some of us are not operating in full anointings. Some of us are not operating in the fullness of glory because of the areas that we are we got resistance in. And tonight, I came to, to, to encourage you tonight. We, we do not want to resist against the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. What is he calling you? What is he unctioning you to do? What is he trying to bring you up higher in? What is he trying to get you to override your fear? Yeah, fear. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I heard him. I heard him just now. He's speaking. I tell you, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Holy, the Holy Spirit just told me right now that fear, fear is the biggest the biggest enemy that causes people to resist me. I'm talking about those that love it, that love God. Those that love God, those that love God. You love God, but oftentimes fear of what people are gonna say, fear of failure, fear of the faces, fear that you're inadequate. Fear is what causes us to resist against the process of God. Come on, come on. But today, some of us, we got to understand, we got to understand, we got, sometimes you got to step out and do it afraid. You don't even know. You don't know what, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to do. Like the Holy Spirit, you know, my wife and I were praying and the Holy Spirit uh, led me. I'm going to give you my testimony. The Holy Spirit literally led me to step away from my job, to step away from my job. And this was at a time that I made more money than I ever made in my life on the current job. And the Holy Spirit, wait a minute, God, you leading me to walk away and step out from this job? Do you want to understand? I ain't even going to lie to you and tell you that there was no fear, that there was no uh, uh, anxiousness and, and, and trying to wrap it around my mind and wrap it around my brain. Uh, but... Glory to God when sometimes you've got to just step out and do it afraid because there's some other things that I'm working on that I'm trying to get to. There's some other things that I'm working on that God wants to bring me into that can never happen being bound to the demands of that job because that job required 11 and 12 hours a day, sometimes more. It required that. And so there was a certain level that I was never going to get to as long as I held on to that. And, and, and there was a legit, you know, sometimes, the, you know, second guessing and, and fear tries to grip my heart. But I said, no, God, I'm going to yield to you. I'm going to yield to you. My wife and I, my wife and I, we prayed about it, stepped out on faith. And fear is that enemy that causes people to resist against God. Sometimes God is telling you to do certain things. He's telling you to, to call somebody, to step out and, and, and to call somebody, to step out and to bless somebody, to step out and to launch out into what he's showing you. You got the vision, sis. You got the idea. You got the blueprint, my brother. You got it. It's already been downloaded in you, but you're waiting on everything to be perfect. You're waiting on everything to align. You're waiting on this and that. But sometimes when you tap into the spirit, the spirit says, now, 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 now do it. Now go. Now I need you. Come on. And you got to you got to be able to yield to the spirit and not let fear cause you to resist what God wants to do. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. Come on, my sister, Minister Sharonda Davis, she's testifying tonight. I am the example of that because because uh, that was me. God is ever so faithful. But listen, since you begin to step out.
You begin to step out and God is using you powerfully and he's going to continue to use you. Come on, every person under the sound of my voice, don't let fear cause you to resist the Holy Spirit. All right. My God. All right, let's go. Let's go forward because we got to we got to keep going so we can resist him. We can resist him as well. You can rebel against the spirit. You can also quench the fire of the spirit and the Holy Spirit can be resisted. I'm going to keep on saying it. The Holy Spirit must be invited in and yielded to. The Holy Spirit must be invited in and yielded to. Hear his nature. The nature of the demonic is to dominate, to oppress, and to override the will of the person. Override the will of the person. The nature of the demonic is to oppress and it is to it is to dominate and override the will of the person. You look anywhere where you saw and when you saw the demonic in the Bible, right? Remember the man who was in the tombs and it says that he he was in tombs. He was naked. He was cutting himself. He was cutting himself. Listen, doing all kinds of things, sleeping among the, the tombs. And, and he was out of his mind. There was another there was another uh, scripture where their young guy, uh, the, they brought his son to Jesus and he says, my son is vexed with the spirit. And oftentimes he throws himself into the fire and, and the spirit tries to dominate and cause him to cause the young boy to be suicidal, to try to kill himself. The nature of the demonic is to override and to and to uh, oppress, to override, possess and to dominate. The nature of the spirit is to liberate, but he will not. He will not dominate. He wants to be submitted to and yielded to because the Holy Spirit comes to cooperate with your spirit. All right. So, so let's go forward. Oh, come on. I, I My sis got a testimony. Got a testimony. I left my job not having another one to and, and to do school and had another job that, to do school and had another job the next week that worked with my school. It was the Holy Spirit that spoke and I moved and he blessed me. My God, come on. I'm telling you, this is what when you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, this is what he will do. And sometimes, like my, like my sis was saying, sometimes there are things that are literally dead ends. Come on, let's get out of the dead ends. Let's get out of the dead end relationships. Let's get out of the dead end jobs. Let's get out of the dead ends that are not leading to purpose. Let's get out of the dead ends. And sometimes that requires you to yield to the Holy Spirit as he guides your life, as he tells you what to do and where to go. Come on. He is leading you to a place that is filled with milk and honey, but you got to follow him. Woo, this is good tonight. This is good tonight. All right, let's go. Um, let's go to this one. I got two more and then we're through. Two more and then we're through. All right, last one, uh, the next one, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 and 30, Ephesians 4 and 30, Ephesians 4 and 30. Now, this one, this one here is heavy. This one here is heavy. I'm going to tell you that right now. This one here is heavy. You're going to see why in just a minute. Ephesians 4 and 30. This one just does something to my heart. It does something to my heart because that's just the way I love God. It's the way I love God. Oh, God, it's the way I love him. It's the way I love him. All right, listen to the language of this text. Listen to the language of this text. And it says these words. Come on, Ephesians 4 and 30. And it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Wow. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And here is where you understand the nature of the Holy Spirit as a person. As a person, as a person, as a being. Because like we said, the Holy Spirit is not an it. He is not a power. The Holy Spirit is not uh, just goosebumps and a feeling. If you see the Holy Spirit as a feeling and you see the Holy Spirit as a shout and a power, oh God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would show up in that place. It was, it was high. The Holy Spirit, it was amazing. If you see the Holy Spirit as an it, 
you will never regard him in the intimate relationship that he wants to have with you. If you see the Holy Spirit as an it, you will never understand the ability that you have as a believer to grieve the spirit of God. Did y'all just hear me? This is why the, 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 the doctrine of, of, of referring to the Holy Spirit as an it is so erroneous because you can treat an it like anything. But you cannot treat him like any old thing. Not the one who redeemed you. Not the one who made your spirit alive. Not the one who paid the price on Calvary. Not the, not the spirit of God that loves you. Not him. Not him. See, you can treat it, it like anything, but you cannot treat him like anything. And the spirit of God says through his words, he says, and do not grieve his spirit. What is grief? What is grief? Come on. Come on. Talk to me tonight. Talk to me tonight. My God, if you treat the Holy Spirit as an it, you will never understand the ability you have as a believer to grieve the Spirit of God. I know that's right tonight. Wow. I, 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 feel, I feel this thing. Listen, you got to understand, I cannot grieve him. All right. How many of you have ever lost someone? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Sorry, I don't know. Something happened to the connection. Something happened to the connection, but we're back on. We're back on. And, and so stick with me, y'all. Stick with me. Stick with me. So listen, when you have experienced grief, you know the gut-wrenching pain of grief because when you love something so dearly and it leaves you, or, or it separates from you, there is a pain of loss. Come on, somebody. There is a pain of loss. And so I want to let you know tonight, I want to let you understand tonight that the Holy Spirit says that the word of God, Paul says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit whom I love, whom I cherish. He says, don't grieve him. I don't want to grieve him. And so with everything that is in me, with every part of me, I do not want to grieve him. Uh, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He'll never stop loving you. He'll never stop turning his back with you, turn his back on you. But I don't want to grieve the Holy One that lives on the inside of me. And how do we grieve him? How do we grieve him? Ultimately, we grieve him when we turn our hearts away. When we turn our hearts away from the Spirit. When we turn and we tell God, I don't want you. I want this. I choose this over you. When we tell God, uh, I don't need you right now. I can make it on my own. I don't need to pray. I don't need to read. I don't need to, I don't need to come to church. I don't need to do it. I don't need any of that spiritual stuff. I don't need any of that God stuff. Do you understand that because he is a person, uh, he can be grieved. Now, any of us who have ever experienced love, you know, the, the beauty of love is that you love someone as hard as they love you. Come on. Uh, some of you, you've been, in, you've been in relationships where you love the person and they didn't reciprocate. You've been in relationships and places where you put in more than somebody gave you back. And it's a, it's a hard thing. It's a hurtful thing. Why can't I wish people would just treat would just I wish everybody would treat me like I treated people that if that was the case, then we would be all right. I love everybody. I try to be kind to everybody. I, I go to bat for, you know, I try to support as much as I can for everybody. Uh, but sometimes when you don't get that reciprocated back, it is hurtful. So listen, the way that the way that how passionate God is for you, how much he loves you, how much he desires your time, how much he desires your communion, how much he desires more of you. Oh, my God, you got to understand that you can grieve the heart of God when you resist his love. Come on, somebody. When you resist his love. All right. I am. I'm really I, I, I'm really I'm really through this teaching tonight. This word tonight. Oh, man, this is one of the most important revelations about the Holy Spirit is that you must yield to him. All right. Final scripture. Final scripture. And then we're going. 
final scripture, and then we're ending for tonight, all right? Um, it says, we're going to go to Galatians, Galatians 5, 16 through 8. 5, 16 through 8. Five, Galatians 5, 16 through 18. Sorry, 16 through 18. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. All right, here we go. This is what the word of the Lord says. All right. It says, um, I love that, Minister Chavis. Keep my heart intertwined with yours. Yes, Lord. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. So it says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit let this Holy Spirit guide your lives. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. All right. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under the obligation of the law. My God, you're not under the obligation of the law. You're not under the power of the curse. You're not under the dominion of sin. When you let the Spirit direct you, come on, my wife, my wife talking tonight, she says, uh, this must be Catherine Coleman teaching tonight. If you don't know Catherine Coleman, Catherine Coleman is a general in, in, the, in, the, in the faith. She's a general in Christendom. Uh, but whenever you listen to Catherine Coleman, the way she talked about the Holy Spirit was like, like she talked about the Holy Spirit like her best friend. She talked about the Holy Spirit in such a way. I, I dare you to look up some videos on Catherine Coleman if you don't know who she is. I mean, she just like, it's almost like she had a romance with the Holy Spirit. She just, she loved the Holy Spirit so much. And she oftentimes talked about it. I don't want to grieve his spirit. I don't ever want to do anything to grieve his Holy Spirit. The way she talks is so, is so uh, theatrical. Um, but she was so sincere, man. I love some Catherine Coleman. And that woman of God walked in a powerful anointing of healing, a powerful anointing of deliverance, a powerful anointing of prophecy. I mean, people came out of wheelchairs under her ministry. People were healed of cancers and diseases. But let me tell you something. It was about the way that she regarded the Holy Spirit. And that's what made her so powerful and so special. And this last scripture, and then I'm going to let you go um, because we only try to keep you for about an hour. All right. So uh, the, this last scripture in the King James, it says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. The New Living Translation says, let the Holy Spirit guide you. And then the last verse, verse 18, says, when you are directed of the spirit, you are not under the obligation or the power of the law. All right. Uh, you are not under the obligation or the power of the law. So he says, You've got to let him guide you. So we, we don't want to rebel against the Holy Spirit. We don't want to pull against him, blatantly pull against the Holy Spirit. We don't want to, we don't want to quench the fire of the Holy Ghost. We don't want the fire to go out. We don't want to suffocate the fire of God. We don't want to resist the Spirit. We don't want to resist the Spirit, right? Resisting is not letting him do the fullness Lastly, we don't want to grieve the spirit. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Come on, y'all tonight. We don't want to grieve him. He is very gentle. Come on, say that. Say that. He is a very gentle God. He will not override your will. He will not override you. He wants you to want him. He wants you to invite him in. He will come into the place where you invite him. He will come into the place where you make room for him. Woo, that's good. He will come into the place where you make room for him and he will inhabit the place where he is invited tonight. If you invite him into your prayer life, he will come into your prayer life. If you invite him into your worship service, he will come into your worship service. If you invite him into your mind, he will come into your mind. If you invite him into your heart, he will He will, He will. will lead and govern your heart. So we don't want to rebel. We don't want to quench. We don't 
don't want to resist. We, we don't want to grieve, but here is what we want. This is what the believer wants. We want the Holy Spirit to guide. We want the Holy Spirit to direct. We want, we want to yield to the Holy Spirit so that he will produce in us. So he will lead us into the path that he has for us. Y'all, this is our prayer tonight. The Holy Spirit must be invited in and yielded to. If you don't take anything else from this series and from this teaching, learn this about the Holy Spirit. So what does that look like? What does that look like? When you wake up in the morning, you've got to invite him into your day. Come on, we've been teaching. Our church has been doing a thing. We've been waking up and we've been saying, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I need you today. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I want you to direct my life today. Direct my heart today. Direct my attitude. When you get in prayer, I want you to begin to pray different. I want you to leave room. I want you to leave room for the Holy Spirit. So if you pray for you pray for 15 minutes. I want you to leave. I want you to leave another five or 10 minutes to give God space to then speak to your heart. Lord, reveal to me. Is there anything that I need to repent of? Lord, reveal to me, is there anything that you want me to do? Lord, I take this time. Is there anybody that you want me to pray for? God, I take this time to yield to your spirit. Come on, make room for him in your prayer life. When you read your Bible, before you even open the page, before you even turn on the app, say, Holy Spirit, I invite you into my word study. I want you to reveal to me. I want you to make, I want you to make these words jump off the page tonight. I want you to make this alive for me. Make this word alive for me. Come on. I dare you to invite him in. Invite him into your house. You want peace in your home. You want an atmosphere of peace and joy and love. I dare you to walk around your house and, and anoint your home and say, Holy Spirit, this house shall be a house of prayer. This house shall be a house of peace. This, peace, this atmosphere will be governed by the Holy Spirit. Wherever you invite him in and wherever you yield to him, the power of God is going to come to his people. I am through tonight. I am through tonight. That is true. If you've never read... Uh, Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn. That is a must-have for your collection. That is a must-have for your collection. Come on, Minister Chavis, you're helping tonight. You're helping tonight. Give me daily convictions, Holy Spirit. I don't want to. I don't want to grieve you. I don't want to unknowingly grieve you. I don't want to make your heart sad. The love that you have shown, the grace that you have shown. I just want to make God smile. All right. So tonight the prophetic unction is coming back. Discernment is coming back. Come on, Father, do it in us. Come on, let's pray. Father, do it in us, Lord God. We don't want to grieve your spirit. We don't want to quench this fire. We pray tonight that the fire of the Holy Ghost comes upon us afresh. We pray, Father, that we begin to live lives, oh God, we begin to yield to you in every area. Father, every area where there was resistance, every area where we said, God, not there, every area where we said, God, I'm not ready, every place in our our hearts, oh God, where we were unwilling, oh God, to submit, Lord God, tonight we submit it to the precious Holy Spirit tonight. Father, we understand that your nature is one that you are not going to override our will. You're not going to override our agenda. You're not even going to override our services. But Lord, you want us to invite you in and to yield to you. Father, come in and do as only you can do. Come into our minds. We yield our minds to you, Holy Spirit. Come in into our hearts. We yield our hearts to your Holy Spirit. Come into our relationships. We yield to you, oh God. Come into our churches. Come into our prayer life. We yield to you tonight. God, do as only you can do. And we pray a blessing upon every heart, every mind, every soul that will yield to your spirit, Father, from this day forward. Oh God, minister to us. Have your way. God bless y'all tonight. God bless y'all tonight. This is so good. Come on, listen. Another testimony about uh, uh, about that book. My sister, Elder Simona, uh, absolutely, Pastor. It makes you fall in love with the Holy Spirit all over again. Listen, get that. Come on tonight. If you want to partner with us and become a partner, a member of SAT, Spirit and Truth Ministries, all right? 
you can text to partners. You can text the word partners to 94090. Listen, we're believing God for the influx of souls that are going to come to the house, uh, not because we are anything greater than anybody else, but because we're praying for the Lord to send the harvest. Yes, we are. God is renewing the grace of salvation to the church, and we're going to see souls saved again. We're going to see people delivered again because we are on our face again, expecting it to happen. So if you want to be a part, if the Lord is leading you, listen, you've been blessed. You need a covering. You need a house of worship. I know somebody out there, you need a house of worship. I know you out there. You need a, a covering. You need a pastor. You need a place to come and worship. You need a place to come develop. You need a place where you can grow. If you're not growing, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone uh, tonight. Uh, glory to God. If you want to give, if you want to sow tonight, if you want to be a blessing to said, you know, this teaching bless me tonight and I want to sow into this. Listen, you can give. The instructions are on the screen. You can give via cash app, dollar sign, S-A-T ministry, or you can give via PayPal. The PayPal is www.paypal.me backslash spirit and truth. Glory to God. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. And uh, my sister, Minister Chavis, says tonight, she says tonight, the word of the Lord, she says, God bless you. Uh, God bless you. We thank you, Pastor, for giving us a reaching teaching from your heart. Bless him on the day. The Lord continue to download heaven, a word upon you. We ask that you strengthen him and bless him in Jesus' name. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it tonight. Y'all have blessed me tonight. We're going to let you go. Enjoy your evening. I don't know. Uh, what did I do here? <laughs> I done messed up the graphic. Y'all forgive me. Here we go. Tonight, Joey says, love you all. Thank you for another anointed word tonight. Your ministry blesses my spirit. Joey, we love you. I think you're uh, in, in uh, Greenville or Spartanburg or something. And, you know, you are you're miles apart, but you are connected to us because you are so faithful to always support and to push us. And we love you for that, you know, near or far. We love everybody tonight, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what I'm going to teach on next week, but I promise you this, it is going to be good. I think we're going to go into, I'm going to give you a little preview. I think we're going to go into the Holy Spirit, the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Y'all ready to go there? He is, he is the gift giver and the fruit bearer. I think I want to talk about that next week. So God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you next week. Bye.